So first off, uh, we're going to talk about kind of the infamous Bitcoin hodl waves um, and how we define these waves and how they're defined on Glassnode is that kind of each color band here shows a percentage of Bitcoin in existence that was last moved within a time period. So if you have a coin that's 10 years old um, that is spent or moved to another address, then that coin supply gets moved to kind of the 24 hour time frame. Uh, so what's really bullish about these su supply dynamics here when looking at this is we're near right at kind of uh, all time highs when we think about 85% of the supply hasn't moved, uh, thinking about coins that are three months or older. Um, this is the same dynamic that we saw in 2015, kind of before massive all time high price run up. And, and this is very similar and based on uh, what long term holders are doing and stacking after all time highs. So really everyone uh, are, are holding coins uh, right now at a, at a significant rate, um, which makes it uh, tougher uh, when new entrants come into the market and they're looking to buy. So the, the float supplies in the market are, are at all low levels. Um, and then kind of this leaves less supply for new market entrants to come in. Uh, and then everyone has to decide within those kind of hold waves, are you gonna profit take or are you gonna have cohorts that are holding this in kind of long-term storage? Yeah, I mean, you can think of it essentially like a like an engineered supply squeeze, right? You know, hodlers are coming in, uh, regardless of price, uh, you know, 55% drawdowns, you know, it doesn't matter, volatility doesn't face these participants. Uh, and we're coming in, we're just gonna, we're just gonna acquire as much free float, of the supply, as much of the circulating supply as we can. Um, and, that, and this is throughout Bitcoin, this is what you kind of see when Bitcoin goes parabolic, essentially, it's just an engineered supply squeeze, you have this, this wave of new demand coming in, uh, and you know they're having to compete and, and competitively bid up a small amount of the supply, and so you know that's why we kind of see these boom and bust cycles. Uh, it doesn't happen in a, in a linear fashion. And I think the exciting thing is here, Sam, that we're uh, we're right at the beginning of another one of these big uh, boom phases. So you know what a time. Yeah, it's a super bullish time. You can you can also see if you look at the period right before we climbed up, we're all, we were like sixty, a little above sixty percent of that supply level. So. Uh, it's been a massive increase over, over the last several months. Um, and, and kind of another way to look at this is just the inverse. Let's say, look at the supply that's uh, kind of less than three months of age and what is it doing? Um, and it's it's only 15% of the circulating supply right now. It's kind of the inverse of that. Another way to say that there's just not a lot of coins moving kind of within these timeframes. Um, and this is also, you know, you get pressure from uh, the kind of the huddle waves and kind of the long-term holders with lost coins as well. So we know that, you know, uh, there's about 2.25 million coins in that 10 year price band. Uh, we know that Satoshi's estimate is, is over a million of those, but those add to those kind of increasing supply dynamics um, because we, need, we can expect or have a high probability kind of expectation that those coins aren't coming back. For those that enjoy just kind of some of these metrics, uh, analyzing the on-chain on -chain trends and seeing what's happening under the hood, uh, make sure to subscribe to the deep dive, uh, Sam and I, uh, you know, dig into this stuff and, and cover all the metrics and, and kind of what's happening in the Bitcoin market every single day. Um, and for those that, that don't want to pay for the pay tier, we, we publish stuff on a bi-weekly basis for our free subscribers. So check that out and uh, see if you enjoy. Uh, thanks for watching.